Hello. Today is Thursday. Um, I think it's the 16th of July. I made a commitment that I was going to do my video journal once a day, and it is now the end of the day. It's about 8 30 in the evening. Normally, I get on in the morning, but um, today has been a very busy day. I got up this morning, I went for a ride, I rode, I think, 25 miles, um, and then I just had enough time to get ready and start my work day. Um, so, busy, busy day. I'm actually just finishing up right now. Um, what did I want to talk about? Well, I have, um, today's day four, no, I guess it's Day four of my chapter 53, 53rd year of life, and um, I'm doing good. I've got some some goals. You know, one of my goals is to do this video blog. Um, I, um, I have a 2020 goal to get to 2020 miles moved, traveled this year, and I am happy to report that I think I'm at 18,050, and uh, it's only the middle of July, so I am kind of kicking butt on that goal. Um, I'm going to try to get up tomorrow and uh, get some miles in as well, so probably within the next two weeks. I'll be there. Um, what's interesting about the whole exercise thing is that um, I try to, try to do some form of exercise all the time, mainly um, to work my leg muscles. So I'll either maybe go like on a 10 mile walk or do a like 20 mile ride. Sometimes I'll do 30 mile, 40 mile, 50 mile. Last weekend on Sunday, I did a 77 mile ride. So that's my longest ride of the season. My longest ride um, historically has been 100 miles, which takes all day. Um, so I'm not there yet, but um, I think I'm doing pretty good. I Some people think I overdo it. You know, I kind of can't get anybody to go ride with me or even walk with me because um, what I hear is you do too much. <laughs> and some might wonder why. Um, and part of the reason that um, I tr do as much as I do or I push myself to, to do as much as I do is um, I don't always make the best choices from a food perspective. And a lot of times when I am lonely or I'm bored or stressed or irritated or, you know, have some kind of negative emotion, um, I tend to make bad food choices. So if I have too much time on my hands, I'm bored, um, you know, it's just easy to grab something and snack. And so if I go to the gym or if I go on a long walk or if I go on a long ride, that's, um, it's time consuming and it's time out of here in a way. And it's kind of a a mechanism that I use to um, offset my bad habits. <laughs> so that's the truth of the matter. Um, it helps me protect myself from um, uh, the devil on my shoulder that tries to be self-sabotaging. Um, so that's one reason. Um, the other reason is because um, I very much want to focus on having really good overall health and um, 
you know, so when I think about health, it's, it's not just, you know, are you heart healthy, right? Some people think, you know, you got to work out so that you can be thin. And if you're thin, you're healthy. If you're not thin, you're not healthy. And I will tell you that that's not the case. So just on paper, um, I have always been healthy. So like, it doesn't matter how much I weighed. It didn't matter what I was doing, what I looked like. Um, if you looked at blood work, you know, my um, blood pressure was always low. I've always had good cholesterol. Um, I guess my good cholesterol at one point in time could be better could be better than it was, but um, the bad cholesterol was levels were always good. So I think it's HDL um, is the good cholesterol and LDL is the bad cholesterol. So my LDL um, cholesterol levels were always really good. Um, and so I guess those numbers were really low. And my HDL, those numbers, um, I think were low too. Like they needed to be, they needed to be higher. And the only way that you can increase your good cholesterol is by exercising. And so um, when I exercise, that just, that resolves that issue for me. Um, but I've never had like, um, I've never had high blood pressure. I've never had, you know, diabetes, high cholesterol, um, any of those things that a lot of people have. Um, and you know, which is a good thing. Um, the other thing that I would say is right now, um, I weigh, I think I I weighed in at 175 pounds. And while some people might think that that's kind of a heavy number, um, it's, um, it's not a bad number. I mean, I'm like a size, I don't even know what size I am, maybe like a size eight. And my clothes, I mean, like a size eight in pants. Um, and I'm hippie. And, um, you know, on the small, medium, large scale, um, I'm probably a medium, but bordering a small. So it's not like I'm a big girl or anything, but um, at one point in time, I was. So at my highest, I weighed 280 pounds. So, um, and about six years ago, I decided, you know, what the heck have I done to myself? And let me, um, let me change that around. And so while on paper, I was physically healthy, I didn't really feel good. And um, I wouldn't say that I was emotionally healthy. um, Because I ate my emotions, you know, I mean, if I was stressed, I was a stress eater. If I was mad, you know, I was a mad eater. If I was sad, I was a sad eater, you know, all those type of things. And I just um, ate myself into becoming this big girl that was very uncomfortable in her own skin. And so I had to change that. So back in 2014, I made a decision that I just had to do something different, and I decided to have um, gastric bypass surgery, which I had in September of 2015, uh, 2014, and by June of 2015, I had lost 140 pounds, Um, and so... You know, some people may just think like, oh, people who have gastric bypass, that weight is just going to come off automatically. I mean, I think you do lose weight automatically, but don't be confused. I did a lot of work to get that weight (laughs) off. And, you know, I basically lost half half of myself. Um, You know, fast forward um, five years, I have gained back about 
40 pounds. Um, and the reason that I've gained that 40 pounds back is because um, I went back to my habitual eating my feelings and, you know, mindless eating and poor food choices. I mean, even though I knew that that's what I was doing. And so I have like slowly but surely gained a lot of weight back. So, um, so then if you think about where we are right now, you know, it is 2020 and the world is in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I live in Illinois and we have basically been at home and um, not able to be extremely active. Um, You know, I mean, in fact, the only time I go outside, I, I get up very early in the morning and I go outside to exercise sometimes you know, at night, um, in the evening after work, I might, you know, go outside for a little while, but the majority of my time is at home, you know, sitting down, sitting in front of a computer working or sitting down in front of a TV or, you know, sitting down at the table and doing something, but it's, um, but when you're home, life is very sedentary. And if you literally can't go anywhere, then, um, you know, there is a tendency to, you know, to eat, to snack, to make bad food choices. And so, um, you know, at the beginning of this year, I had made this commitment, you know, to be committed to exercise and to be eating, you know, eating the right way, making good food choices, increasing my water intake, all that type of thing. And, I was really focused on it and I had lost like, I don't know, I think I had lost like 12 of the 40 pounds and had set a goal for myself to try to lose as much as I could by, um, by June. But, you know, then March comes and we're in the midst of this pandemic and, um, you know, being honest, you know, I was, um, I was frightened by it. And, um, I don't think that I was consciously frightened. Um, but I had a certain amount of anxiety about what was going on. And, and like I said, just from a mental health standpoint, um, my anxiety drives me to have, you know, to make poor choices from a food perspective. So that's like my, I got a behavioral eating problem (laughs) that I know I have to have. So that's not healthy. So I have to, I have to do things to overcome that. So, um, you know, kind of from other people's perspectives, me going overboard on exercise combats, um, the bad stuff that I'm doing from an eating perspective. And so, um, I did end up, you know, where I gained back some of the 11 pounds. And so I think that I probably, I have to go back and check my records. But when I said I wanted to lose the weight, I think I was at 180. So I definitely had gained back 40 pounds. Now I'm at 175. And so, um, you know, basically, so this whole entire seven months, I've only lost five pounds. Um, And I think the reason that I've only lost five pounds as opposed to gaining a bunch of weight is because I've been doing long walks and going on like ridiculously long rides and, um, you know, like I may ride a bike, I may ride 200 miles a week. Um, it's not every week, but I push myself to do that. And so, like I said, I'm trying to combat those things. So now that I'm in chapter 53, I've decided, I'm just like, you know what? I don't have time anymore to have this self-sabotaging behavior. And, um, 
So I've been doing, I'm doing a great job on exercise. Um, earlier this year in February, um, I decided to, to go to a plant-based diet. And part of the reason for that is I just wanted my body to feel good. I wanted to have, you know, to know that my digestive system was working the right way, you know, for my skin to feel good, you know, not breaking out, stuff like that, um, for me to be able to have more energy, endurance, all of those things, um, and just not to be putting, um, I don't know, bad stuff in my, in my system. Um, I don't really think that we were meant to be, uh, that, that humans were meant to be meat eaters. And so, um, as a result, you know, I made that switch and I've been doing good and I haven't missed it. I have no regrets. I have no desire to turn back time and go back to, um, eating, eating meat or eating, uh, um, animal-based, animal products, byproducts, whatever. So, um, so anyway, and so now I've decided, okay, I'm going to put down the cookies and put down the chips and whatever other snacks, and I am just really and truly strictly going to be plant-based and, um, not eat processed stuff and um, see what happens. And so part of me doing this journaling is going to help me from an accountability standpoint because I can say, you know, here's what I want to do. Here's what I've done. Um, here's what I'm struggling with. Here's how I'm feeling, whatever. And holistically, you know, from, a, um, you know, how am I feeling mentally, emotionally, physically, um, I'm just putting myself in the best possible position just to be good all the way around. Um, and, you know, me sharing this you know, as a way to hold myself accountable will help me also just to overcome or to get past whatever. Because, you know, like I said, I got problems from a food behavioral standpoint in terms of how I'm behavioral eating. And if I wake up in the middle of the night and it's like, oh, I want a, I want a snack. <laughs> you know, and I, sometimes I would have, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> candy right next to my bed and I just wake up in the middle of the night and you know and just start eating it and it made no sense and so now I mean I'm still waking up but I might say okay well I'm gonna go eat some grapes instead or you know let me just go take a spoonful of peanut butter or something like that and um you know because it's that's fat but it's healthy fat and it's not too much and so um me talking about it helps me hold myself accountable and helps me to do better. So like I said, this is day four and I haven't cheated. I've wanted to very much, um, but I haven't. So I feel good about that. Um, other thing that I wanted to share, um, and I guess this is a I don't know if I would say that this is a, a goal. It's kind of a sort of a, a goal. Um, you know, like I said, I just want to be healthy all the way around. I want my physical health to be good. I want my mental health to be good. Um, and I just, I want to feel good about who I am and all those things. Um, and so focusing on mental health, it's very, very, very important that I put myself in a position, um, I guess in the best possible position to make sure 
that I'm good from a mental health standpoint. Um, I, years ago, um, so I'm now 53, so 23 years ago, um, I had what I'm going to call a nervous breakdown and ended up being hospitalized and am told that um, I had a manic episode, which manifested into a psychotic break, which is why I ended up being hospitalized and was diagnosed with a bipolar disorder. And at that period of time, I didn't know what it was. You know, fast forward um, several months, you know, I saw a specialist and she's like, oh, I think you were misdiagnosed and you, um, you were under lots and lots of pressure and you just reached a point where the, you know, there was something where it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And, um, you know, if you had gone on, if you had removed yourself from that situation and you had like gone on a vacation on an island where you just couldn't be, uh, you know, you could just relieve all of your stress and move yourself away from the the stress and the negativity um, that you were dealing with, that you probably would have been okay. But um, that wasn't my that wasn't my case. Um, and so that whole experience was just really awful for me. And, um, you know, I'm glad now that 23 years later, I can think about it. And I don't feel the same way that I did about it, because I had a lot of really bad feelings about that whole experience from way back when. Um, And so that was 23 years ago. And then, and that was 1997. And um, in 2005, I found myself in a situation from a stress level standpoint that was similar. And um, I experienced the same thing and was hospitalized again, this time for a shorter period of time. Um, and then, um, again in 2013 that, um, I experienced something similar again, and it was much shorter in duration. Um, and so from that, you know, you have to look at it and that some things are cyclical And so if you believe that, then my cycle is every eight years. And so now it's 2020. The last time it happened was in um, 2013, which means that if it was going to happen based on the cycle again, then my risk is that in 2021, that that might happen again. And so for me, getting back to goal, my goal would be for me to get through 2020, to get through 2021 (laughs) without having that experience. Um, And to do it, I need to be conscious of, you know, how I'm doing, what kind of balance I have in my life, how much pressure I'm putting on myself, um, those types of things. Because, you know, when that happens, to a certain extent, you have to realize that it's self-inflicted. You know, it's like you don't, you hear those phrases like, don't sweat the small stuff. It's true shouldn't sweat the the small stuff. And, you know, when these things happen to me, you know, the, the reason that it happened to me is because I was inflicting a lot of stress on myself. I was 
taking on, well, in some instances, I, I was setting no limits, you know, it was all work related and I just was trying so hard to be the best that I could be. I cared so much about what people thought of me. You know, if somebody, if I thought somebody thought negatively of me, I put a lot of energy into what are all the things that I could do to prove them wrong, um, you know, to make them think different, to make them think better of me. Um, if there were people that I was working with and we were, you know, trying to achieve a a goal and there were roadblocks it didn't matter I I was going to get the goal no matter no matter what and um though the effort that I put forward um in getting to goal and the negativity that I was dealing with and trying to overcome from weighed so heavily on me that um, it just caused me to be mentally exhausted, right? And um, when you get to a point where you're fatigued, you've got to be able to you've got to be able to stop, right? Or you have to be I don't know. I feel like when you need to make big pushes, um, you have to have put yourself in a position where you have conserved some energy, right? You have, you're conscious about balancing out your good stress and your bad stress. So a lot of times, I put a lot of emphasis on doing things um, like that are physical, you know, like I go walk 10 miles and while I'm putting a lot of stress on my body physically, um, I'm doing wonderful things for my mind (laughs) because I worry about nothing when I'm on a long walk. I... Um, everything that I'm focused on, I mean, if there's anything negative, it's all worked out on that, on that walk. Um, and I'm not allowing myself to do anything that would burden my mind. Um, and so, um, and I just think that when you're getting good exercise, you're helping, you're, you're relieving I mean, you're doing a lot, but you're relieving all that negative energy and all the negative stress, and you're putting yourself in a position to make room for whatever whatever negative stress that you have to, whatever bad stress you have to take on, you know? Um, so anyway, these are the type of things that I do myself and so I'm determined um, I think I've actually figured out how to never ever deal with a manic episode again Um, and it's all about positivity positive thinking and being conscious about um putting myself in the best position possible to be the best version of me that I can be. So anyway, I have rambled for a long time, so I'm going to get off of here. And um, for anybody that listened, thank you. Bye.